I'm Mike Waring, alias the Falcon. You don't have to work for the government to know where the lady with the lamp stands. She can light your way out of the country as well as in, if you double cross Uncle Sam. For instance, there's the proprietor of this cozy little joint who sneaked past the lady with a lamp without proper credentials 30 years ago. The profits from this hangout are only a drop in the bucket compared to what Vic Savoy collected as a racket's boss. I give you New York's most unhappy millionaire, who is soon to be deported for false statements in obtaining citizenship. Ow! What's that for, Vic? You dig too hard with the comb, it feels like a rake. Sorry. I'll do it myself. Ow! Uh, not sore, are you, Paul? No, boss. I guess I'm just sore at the world today. Here. Here's a double saw. Gee, thanks. About time you got here, Stacy. Low. I disposed of all your holdings. All except this place. There you are. Hundred thousand cash. You better count it. I will. Later. You know, that makes almost two million in cash. How am I gonna get it out of the country? That's a good question. You're not a disbarred lawyer for nothing. Think of something. You know, uh, you're the only one that knows about this gadget. So if it's gone, so are you. Well, don't worry, Vic. In case I'm ever tempted, I'll just remember that you have a nasty habit of taking care of people. Well, don't ask for trouble. Just start earning your pay. Remember, you've got to get me by the income tax, immigration, and custom guys with two million bucks in my breast pocket. Mm. Hey, that's it. In your pocket, in the lining of your hat, or sewed into your shoulder pads. Have you gone goofy? What are you talking about? You got any stamps in your desk? I'll demonstrate. Sure, plenty of them. So what? There's a one-cent stamp just this size. British Guiana, 1856, worth a hundred thousand dollars. A hundred? You're kidding. Vic, there's one thing I never kid about, and that's about money. Rare stamps are worth a fortune. Same thing as cash, huh? Good as gold in any part of the civilized world. Not even a bulge. Yeah. All right, start buying stamps for cash and keep me out of it. This is the one, Mr. Metz. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Very good, very good. I, I, I think this will interest him. Oh, good morning, Mr. Rogan. Good morning, Mr. Metz. I've selected some items from the Spencer Gerard collection. Here's the list. Mm-hmm. Oh, an excellent selection. Excellent. Uh, I'll contact Mr. Harcourt at once. He's the executive for the Gerard estate. You can contact Mr. Harcourt later. Here's $326,000 in cash, the sum total of the prices listed for those stamps. Oh, oh, oh. It's, 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 it's rather frightening to have such a large amount in currency. Uh, couldn't you pay by check? Sorry, my client prefers it that way. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, do you mind uh, telling me the name of your client? He's a retired businessman, prefers to remain anonymous. Well, it's not unusual with big collectors. Oh, uh, uh, Eva, uh, would you give Mr. Rogan a receipt while I put this money away? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Meet you at the cocktail lounge, same time.
Selling forged stamps to Victor Savoy can be very unhealthy. How would a dunce like Vic know the difference? Well, if he does, the next time I'll see you, we'll be on a slab in the morgue. Honey, he'll be out of the country before he gets wise. Now, will you do it? Why did I have to fall in love with a crook? That is an outmoded term. You mean, uh, I'm an opportunist. Sorry, Stacy. But there are two places that don't appeal to me. Prisons and graveyards. Honey, look, how can I make you understand this is a chance that comes once in a lifetime? Not for me, Stacy. I want no part of it. For over a year now, you've been trying to get me to quit the racket. Now I get a chance to quit, you won't help me. Do you think I like working for Vic? Being disbarred because of my connection with him? Honey, don't you understand? I was thinking of you when I went to work for him. But pretty soon we'd have enough money so that you could quit your job and we could go away together and live the life we planned. Stolen money? That's not the life we planned. Why not? How do you think Vic got his bankroll? My brains that put him where he is. What do I get out of it? Lousy few hundred a week. Half of that money rightfully belongs to me. And this is one way to get it. So if I don't throw away our one chance for happiness. All right, Stacy. That's my girl. You'll never regret it. Waiter. Well, don't argue with me, Mr. Metz. I repeat, a number of forgeries were substituted, and I want the originals. Incidentally, I've notified the authorities. I'm, I'm sorry you were so hasty, Mr. Harcourt. Surely there must be some mistake. Uh, at least you must give me the opportunity to look into the matter. Hmm? Well, uh, yeah. Oh, very well, very well, sir. You'll hear from me later. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm going out for a few minutes. phoned me to take a room at the Rexworth Hotel, and he would call me at 3 p.m. to give me further instructions. Dan is a special agent in charge of the United States Secret Service in New York. It's open. Well, hello, Chief. Hey, you're certainly punctual. Get yourself comfortable. No time for that, Mike. I understand you know something about philately. Well, uh, collecting stamps was sort of a hobby with the Waring family. Here, take a look at these. Mauritius, 1847. Unused. Gold Coast, 1883. One penny on fourpence. These are great. U.S. Airmail, 1918. 24 cent inverts. Oh, you know something, Dan? If these were the real McCoy, they'd be worth... Oh, $50,000. What makes you think they're not? Well, take those two airmail inverts, for instance. I know of only one block of four in existence, and no confirmed philatelist would ever separate them. You're right, Mike. They're counterfeits. The cleverest I've ever seen. Well, you got any leads? A Joseph V. Metz stamp house on the ground floor of this hotel. That's why I had you register here. Oh, then you think Metz is our man, huh? Perhaps. He had possession of the Girard collection for a few days. These counterfeits were in the album returned to an Adam Harcourt, attorney for the estate. Oh, that's what Harcourt claims, I suppose. Precisely. Well, supposing Harcourt made the substitutions himself. Possibly. I think I'll pay both of these gentlemen a little visit. Let me have Harcourt's address, would you please? Harcourt. 
Mr. Hartman. Uh, you, Mr. Harcourt? Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Here, have a seat. My name is Mike Waring, special agent. Yes. I came over to talk to you about those counterfeit stamps. Well, you came over to the most opportune moment, Mr. Waring, that visitor I just had. You frightened him away. He left by the side door when I heard you knocking. Oh, what was he after? Well, it's a Gerard collection, but strangely enough, he seemed most anxious to get the counterfeits. Well, there's nothing strange about that. Did he get the album? No, I keep it in the bank vault. Tell me, does anyone else know about this collection other than Mr. Metz? Well, I couldn't say. I talked to Metz on the phone about an hour ago, and, well, he seemed to be very upset. Do you consider Mr. Metz to be a reputable dealer? Well, he has an excellent reputation. Well, I guess that's about all. Don't wait a moment. There's one more thing. Can you let me have a few of those rare stamps? I'd like to use them as bait. Well, I don't know that I can grant that request, Mr. Waring. After all, they're very valuable. Certainly, I realize that. But you're just as anxious as I am, are you not, to apprehend the counterfeiter? Well, naturally. Well, then. That's a risk, but well worth it. I'm buying them for the estate from my own collection. Well, your curious visitor obviously didn't look in the obvious place. Well, Mr. Waring is a lawyer. I found that uh, people seldom suspect the obvious. Mr. Harcourt, would you like to shake hands with an obvious stamp thief? Very rare. Do you realize the value of these stamps? Well, no, that's what I was asking you. They were just a gift to me. A gift? You call stamps worth more than $50,000 a gift? $50,000, that's all I need to know. Uh, 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 just a moment, uh, just a moment. Uh, this Newfoundland 1927 to Penedo, and this uh, Milbury 1846 Postmaster Provisional, uh, they strike a familiar note. Yeah, I, I, I know. That's all very interesting. I'd like to hear your story, but I haven't got time. May I have a uh, No, no, no. You can surely spare me a few more minutes. Could these stamps by any chance be from the Girard collection? Why do you ask? Did I say they were? May we have your name and address, please? What do you want to know that for? Well, how else could Mr. Metz contact you in the event he finds a buyer for your stamps? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Well, my name is Mike Waring, and I'm staying right here at the Rexworth Hotel. Incidentally, if you run into anyone with a lot of cash who wants to make a quick deal, you know where to find me. Having achieved my purpose, there was no sense in carrying around the bait any longer. So Mr. Harcourt's stamps went back to him by the safest messenger service in the world, Uncle Sam's mail. Just a minute, friend. Let's sit down and have a nice, quiet talk. What about? Stamps. Sure, why not? All right, hand them over. There he is. That's him. I'm positive he had no right to those stamps he asked me to appraise. All right. Let's have a look at them, bud. I'm sorry, I'm fresh out of stamps. Yeah? They were in an envelope. Could be in his room. Come along, you. Thanks, Sergeant, for not tipping my hand. I was with OSS for two years, Mr. Waring. Say, uh, what's Paul the Barber got to do with this caper? Paul the Barber? Yeah, the laddie you were talking to in the lobby. Well, do you know him real well? Well enough. He's Vic Savoy's right-hand man. The racketeer? Uh-huh. Operates out of a place called the Club Victor. Ooh. Come here. He's out there at the table. Who are you talking about? That guy wearing. Did he spot you? No, I don't think so. What's the play, boss? 
Do you have to ask? Put the bite on him. Oh, wait a minute, Paul. Becky's too cagey to have the stamps on him. They must be in his room. But the police sergeant told Metz he couldn't find them there. No, oh, so what? Look, Paul, slip out the back way. Take his room apart if necessary. Go ahead. Do what he says. Not that way, you dope. Eva, go out there and stall him. I'm not a stooge, Stacy. Honey, go on. Hello. Well, this is a pleasant surprise, Miss... Zenny, Eva Zenny. Did you have any luck disposing of your stamp? No, not yet. Do you have any prospects? I might think of one, if you ask me to sit down. Oh, well, consider yourself asked. <laughs> uh, order yourself something, will you? I'll be right back. Are you always this polite, Mr. Waring? Oh, uh, look, I'm, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell the desk clerk where to find me. I'm expecting an important phone call. I'll only be a minute. stamp collection, weren't you? A thief calling me a thief. That's a hot one. You're only a thief when you get yourself caught. I didn't. Now, look, why don't you and I stop this dog fight? I've got a fortune tied up in those stamps, and I think you know who wants them. What's the deal? You tip me so I can make a deal direct. You get what's coming to you. How do I know you're on the level? You don't. Those stamps are worthless to me unless I can turn them into cash. Think it over. Let you know later. Fair enough. Oh, incidentally, I'm checking out of this room tomorrow at noon. Tell that to your boss. How does he know that Vic... I'll see you before you leave. You've been gone quite a long minute. My phone call came just as I was talking to the desk clerk. And you know what? It concerned you. Me? Yeah, my friend told me you might be able to help me in a deal. In rare stamps. I don't think Mr. Metz would approve of my doing business behind his back. Well, he needn't be concerned. My idea was to have the stamps counterfeited. If I thought it would do any good, I'd slap your face, Mr. Waring. Good night. Quite an expert, aren't you, Eva? Sorry to interrupt a work of art. U.S. Bicolor, 1869. With the center field reversed, the vignette also reversed. There's a neat little $15,000 counterfeit. Well? If I may ask, what business is it of yours? It's Uncle Sam's business. You, a government agent? You're in serious trouble, Eva. You want a little friend advice? Not from you. Look, there's no catch to it. You can make things a lot easier for yourself. By turning squealer, I suppose. Look, I'm only trying to help you, dear. Do you want to spend years of your life in prison protecting whoever put you into this spot? Was it Metz? No. He had nothing to do with the counterfeiting. Nothing, do you understand? He doesn't even know I've been coming back here nights. Who was it, Vic Savoy? Look, Angel, we're going to find out anyway. Not for me, you won't. All right. Hello, Dan. This is Mike Waring. 
I'm over at the Met Stamp House. I've just cracked this case. Yeah, I'd like you to join me for a talk with the young lady. So long, Dan. So long is right, Mr. Waring. Frisk him, Paul. You sure had me fooled, copper. Well, so you're behind the counterfeiting ring, Mr. Benson. Rogan's the name. Stacy Rogan. Yeah? Well, that's strange. Because your record card at San Quentin calls you Henry Benson. How's your wife? I'm his wife. Oh, well, then you're a bigamist as well. Shut up! How much have you told me? Then it's true. I'm not your wife. Don't believe a word of it, either. Well, if you don't believe me, why don't you just call the warden at San Quentin? Give him a description of this gentleman. He'll confirm everything I've said. You're not calling anybody. How much did you tell him? Nothing. But I will now. He's the one worrying. He's been selling the counterfeit to Vic Savoy. Over there. Gonna give it to him now? Now. Well, you... Get back! See, the idea. Vic might want to have a little talk with him first. He's still the boss, Stacy. On your way. Come on. I'm sorry, Waring, but I've got no choice but to have you rubbed out. I can't have the government know I'm buying rare stamps. What do I care whether or not you buy stamps? <laughs> With undeclared money? Cut the clowning. Oh, so that's it. You think I'm after your unpaid income tax? You're wrong, Savoy. I'm with Secret Service, not with the Treasury Department. Besides... Let's get it over with, Vic. What's the matter? Are you afraid I'll tell him about the counterfeit stamps? Boy, you... you drop that gun! Sit down, Stacy. Now, what's this about counterfeit stamps? Well, that's the kind you've been buying. Me? You're crazy. Why, I bought the best money could buy. Someone's been pulling a fast one on you. He's stalling for time, Vic. There's only one way to keep this guy from wrecking your plans, and the sooner the better. Can you tell a fake stamp from a real one? I'm a pretty fair judge. Get him, Stacy. But this... You heard me. Nice little nest egg you have in cold storage. If I wanted your money, Vic, I could have emptied the safe any time. Waring, take a look at these. They're counterfeit. He's saying that to save his own neck. You sure? Ask Eva. How about it, Eva? He's right, Vic. All the stamps you have are counterfeit. I made them. Stacy forced me to. He said you'd never know the difference. She's lying, Vic. This federal agent promised her immunity. Yeah? Take him, Paul! I said before, Waring, I'm going to have to rub you out. Over there. And you too. I can't have any witnesses testifying against me. Looks like I got here just in time. Well, you can say that again in spades. How'd you know I was here? It figured when you weren't at the stamp house. This the young lady you mentioned? Yes, that's our star witness, Mrs. Eva Rogan. And that's her husband over there. Oh. Meet Vic Savoy. He the big boy? No, he's just a patsy who tried to cheat the United States government. But instead got himself a batch of phony stamps. Also a murder rap. Yeah. 